Good morning. Greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I am your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you. Our number today, 844-236-6010. 844-236-6010. If you have a health challenge you or a loved one may be dealing with, if you have a, a client, if you're doing the longevity business, you have a challenging client you want help with, 844-236-6010 is our number. And of course, if you have questions about skin health, skin health products or formulations or ingredients, something you may have heard about or read about, 844-236-6010 is your number on the bright side. We want to be your go-to source for all things health. 844-236-6010 is our number. This is the program where we give you the straight scoop about how the body is put together and what you can do to improve its health, to improve its conditioning, to reverse the aging process, and to deal with health challenges. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the program or recommended on the program, please go to my websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can order products off the website, and of course, you can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off the website as well. I want to give my friend Melissa Galladay, nutritional pharmacist, a plug. She's doing uh, her Tuesday evening, or Tuesday morning and Tuesday evening, 10 a.m., Uh, Pacific Standard Time and um, also 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. She does a, 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 I guess, a health call, you call it. Uh, You can dial 408-638-0968, 408-638-0968, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time today, every Tuesday, and 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time today and every Tuesday. The meeting ID is 579-044. 9276. That's 579 9276. I'll try to give this out again. Uh, if you miss it, I'll try to give this out again uh, in our next break. So uh, grab a pen and a piece of paper. All right, later on uh, in our uh, bottom of the hour, we're going to talk to David Hoffel, the author of a really interesting sales book, The Science of Selling, for you guys doing longevity products. Uh, it's got some interesting science stuff in it. It's also about selling. It's a pretty darn good book for anybody who's into not just sales, but also. Uh, business, or even just personal relationships. We'll talk to David Hoffeld in the bottom of the hour. Get your calls here in our next segment at 844-236-6010. All right, so we're talking connective tissue, the stuff that weaves us all together, that knots us all together, all our cells, our structures, our organs. It's all put together. It's all connected via web. A web yeah, that's how you want to think of the connective tissue, a web that covers everything up and makes, about a quarter, makes up about a quarter of our bodies. And I'm sure you guys have heard of connective tissue. It's in, you hear about it a lot in, in the world of health and nutrition. And of course, you've heard about it on this program. But it's linked to disease and it's linked to aging. It's not really recognized, unfortunately. This would simplify a lot of the aging process, a lot of how we deal with the aging process. It would simplify a lot of how we deal with disease if we just focused on the connective tissue. Now, we're going to talk a lot about how this relates to the skin because having beautiful skin is about having beautiful connective tissue, healthy connective tissue. Nobody talks about this in the skincare world because there's not a lot you can do topically for the connective tissue with the exception, the very notable exception, the very important exception of vitamin C 
and vitamin A and also alpha hydroxy acids. Between these three components, you really can do something for the connective tissue topically, but most connective tissue building strategies and, and, and ways to leverage the importance and the power of the connective tissue when it comes to aging or health or the lack thereof involves nutrition. But because we don't really see how the connective tissue in, is involved in all the different parts of our body bodies, we really underestimate the power of connective tissue building nutrition and connective tissue building strategies in general. We underestimate the power of glucosamine. We underestimate the power of high aluronic acid. We underestimate the incredible power of vitamin C without which you cannot make condition, uh, connective tissue. And even if you don't have, even if you have some vitamin C, but you don't have enough vitamin C, your connective tissue will suffer. Now, when it comes to the skeletal system or perhaps even, and the joints and perhaps even the skin, we really don't appreciate that the connective tissue is involved in the rest of the body, particularly in the circulatory system, in the heart. Cardiovascular disease is a connective tissue disease large, in large part, not perhaps entirely, but in large part. And cardiovascular disease, as most of you guys know, is the leading cause of death in this country and around the world. And a leading cause of misery. I mean, I don't have heart disease, but I can only imagine what that must be like for somebody. It, it, just put yourself in the place of somebody who's dealing with this kind of thing. Your heart is, in, it's indescribable how functional and important this thing is. And, and to have a disease not only is, can, is physically agonizing, but psychologically and emotionally traumatizing as well. 13 million Americans have heart disease. That's nearly 5% of us. Over 600,000 Americans are going to die from heart disease every year, about one person a minute. According to the American, uh, American College of Cardiology, over 700,000 Americans are going to suffer their first heart attack this year, and another 470,000 are going to have their second heart attack this year. So obviously we got a serious problem here. And while the blame for this problem goes to diabetes, weight, uh, obesity, and, and overweight issues, respiratory health issues, smoking, poor diets, drugs, alcohol. What gets missed is the fact that heart disease is in many ways just a generic way the body breaks down. The connective tissue, that is. The connective tissue breakdown that occurs when you have, when you have any disease in the aging process is, is in many ways what, what, what the cause of heart disease is. The, uh, the heart and the vascular system are largely connective tissue, which forms the, the structure, the underlying framework of all our blood vessels, all our valves, of the heart itself, which has a, a cardiac skeleton. In a study that was uh, based on medical records from a million two hundred and fifty thousand adult patients, uh, African-American patients, they found that African-Americans who had connective tissue diseases like lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, were twice as likely to suffer from narrow or atherosclerotic blood vessels. This was published in the journal Nature, February 4th, 2016. These findings, this quote, these findings raise new questions about the links between connective tissue diseases and atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. Well, just as common sense. You don't need a study to tell you if the heart and the vascular system are made of connective tissue. This is from Dr. Francis Allengott, MD, PhD, assistant professor of medicine in the section of cardiology at the University of Chicago, he goes on to say, quote, they point to uh, heart disease risks tied to systemic inflammation. From the March 1987 edition of the American Journal of Medicine, we learn, quote, inherited abnormalities of connective tissue elements often cause changes in the structure and function of the circulatory, of the cardiovascular system. And none of this should come as a surprise to anyone who understands the nature of disease, not just heart disease, but disease in general. What's going on here? What's happening with, when we have this aging thing and the cardiovascular, uh, the coronary heart disease or the cardiovascular health issues or any of these connective issues, what's going on? Well, what's happening is the connective tissue is breaking down. It's deteriorating. It's wounding. It's somehow being attacked by sugar, by toxicity in the digestive system. Inflammation follows and then a hardening follows. That's disease in a nutshell, folks. All right. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back on the bright side right after this. Hi, right, we're back on the bright side, and we do have lines open for you. 
if you have a question about the longevity products or true skin health products or anything we're speaking about here today or a health challenge you or a loved one may be confronting, 844-236-6010 is our number, and now's the time to call. We're going to talk to David Hoffeld at the bottom of the hour about his book, The Science of Selling. Uh, an evidence-based book that connects the dots between science and sales. I find this book very intriguing, and uh, I think you're going to like this, especially if you're doing, especially if you're in business. Uh, I know many of you guys are. If you're entrepreneurially minded, if you're doing the longevity business, David's got some really interesting things to say uh, and a very interesting sales approach. We'll talk to him at the bottom of the hour. 844-236-6010 is our number. So much, so much I want to. I hope you guys aren't getting bored with this. Uh, idea, this whole thing about connective tissue, because it is so fascinating uh, how our bodies, what we call disease is really one of the ways, is really the manifestation of the way the body fixes itself. What happens is the connective tissue, and this is for almost all chronic long-term degenerative diseases. I, I don't want to say all, because maybe there's one that's sneaky that I don't know about, but certainly most chronic long-term degenerative diseases and the aging process itself, and definitely cardiovascular disease, involves, involves this three-part system of damage followed by inflammation followed by hardening or fibrosis, the fibrosis being the repair mechanism. However, when it happens chronically, that's not a good thing. That's where you get hardening, and that's where you get sclerosis, and that's where you get stenosis. That's where you get disruptions in electrical energy in the brain and the heart, and that's where you get arrhythmias and seizures and Parkinson's and dementia and Alzheimer's. It's all the connective tissue, and nobody's talking about this because there ain't nothing in the doctor's magic bag of tricks that can do anything anything about the connective tissue. Oh, they can stitch in stem cells and they can put uh, 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 fake cartilage in and they can put f filters in your blood and they can put valves and do all kinds of fancy schmancy high-tech surgical techniques, but they can't build the connective tissue. Only God can through us and our decisions and our, our, our actions through nutritional supplementation, through avoiding sugar, through uh, patching up the gut, which itself is a connective tissue problem, leaky gut syndrome. All the things we talk about pretty much on this program are about building the connective tissue, strengthening the connective tissue. And there's nothing the doctor can do about it. And I'm sorry, if you're going to the doctor for your arthritis, you have drank the Kool-Aid. I don't mean to offend anybody. That's not what I'm doing here. I'm not attacking you. I'm just telling you, you drank the Kool-Aid because there's nothing your doctor can do except do some kind of fancy schmancy surgery or reduce the inflammation, which is a protective response. Anti-inflammatories shut down the body's protective responses. Now, I know sometimes you need these things once in a while, of course, but chronic long-term use of anti-inflammatories to deal with chronic long-term degeneration is not a good idea. And that's why even so-called gentle and benign and over-the-counter anti-inflammatories like aspirin and Motrin have disease costs, very significant disease costs, very significant adverse reaction costs. Anyway, we'll continue this discussion tomorrow. And for we're going to talk about it for a while. We're going to talk about cirrhosis and fibrosis. We're going to talk about the eyes and fibrosis. We're going to talk about skin health and fibrosis. And we'll do that in the coming days. On the bright side, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to Ohio and welcome Jenny. Good morning, Jenny. What's up? Good morning. Um, I don't know if you remember me, but I'm the person that had the um, clot. I said I had, thought I had a clot in my foot. Okay. Uh, a few weeks ago. So I've had surgery, and it turned out I had, well, I'm just going to give you their label, plantar fibroma with a clot oh. that, you know, blood vessel will burst inside of the fibroma. Okay. Now, what's the key word there? Fibroma, right? Mm -hmm. A fibroma is just a fiber body. It's just a clump of fiber. It grew, uh, and now this, you said a plantar, right? Yes. So it started on your foot? It's in my, the ar top of the arch of my foot. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, that's the sign that the area is being chronically wounded. That means your body's breaking down. Now, I'm guessing that you're probably in your 40s or 50s, right? You don't have to tell me exactly. But pretty close. 61. 61. Okay, good. So this is just, you know, par for the course. But here's the thing, my dear. It's not just a blood clot. It's not just the it's not just the connective tissue in the foot that's breaking down. It's everywhere. You're just breaking down. So what you want to do is you want to start to figure out why. Well, you don't even need to do that because you can assume it starts off in the gut. You got to have digestive issues, long standing. Okay. okay. 
So you got it. That's the first thing, place to work. But you want, I want, I'm giving you a picture of what's happening in terms of the connective tissue being damaged, and then your body's repairing it. That's what the fibroma is. It's a, it's a growth, basically, a nodule. And whenever you have a fibrotic nodule, you have the, you know, why would the body make fiber when you think about it? Is the body crazy? Are cells retarded? Are cells just stupid and God made a mistake and, and the cells just don't know what the heck they're doing? You, you follow me with my logic here? Why would the cells secrete more fibers? To protect themselves, to protect the body. You follow? So your, your only question is why is my body trying to protect itself? Starts off in the gut. All the digestive system things we talk about, food, uh, food di- uh, oh, first fast for a couple of days, then do a food diary and write down all your problems associated with certain foods. I'm guaranteeing you, you've got problems with foods, guaranteeing you, 100%. You have to have longstanding, probably constipation, because that's what most of us are dealing with, but, but some kind of longstanding digestive health issue, right? So that's the first thing, that's the first place you got to work. Did your doctor tell you this? Of course not. That's not how they are. That's not, that's not what they do. It's not their fault. That's just not what they do. All right, so that's the first thing. The second major uh, food toxicity is going to cause connective tissue damage. The next cause of connective tissue damage is sugar. So you got to treat yourself like di- like a diabetic. It's no accident that degenerative diseases, connective tissue diseases, and, and elevated blood sugar and diabetes go hand in hand. And, uh, so that's the next thing, and, and work with all your uh, blood sugar stabilizing nutrients. And I, you know, one of these days you guys are going to say, Ben, you say the same thing over and over again. Well, I do. Because it's the same problem. You follow me, Jenny? Yes. Yeah, so what are some of those? Selenium. Uh, selenium. Five, yeah, 400 to 600 micrograms a day. Get on the ultimate selenium. The sweeties from longevity. Two or three after all meals. Your B vitamins in generous amounts, especially from the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Sip on it all day long. Make sure you're okay. using a balanced omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acid like the ultimate EFAs all day long. Make sure you're getting a full spectrum of minerals either from... Uh, your Mighty 90 Essential Nutrients, the Healthy Start Pack, uh, salt, Celtic sea salt and water is another good way to get minerals. Vegetable juices, another good way to get minerals. Make sure you're doing high doses of vitamin C, at least a gram a day, but even two or three or even four grams a day. Vitamin C equals good connective tissue. Are you with me? Mm-hmm. Okay. Most important, though, is the food aspect, because as long as toxicity is getting into the blood, you're going to have problems. And then last, of course, but not least, bone broth protein. Go to Brightside Health and get bone broth protein. Do it every day. Get on the glucogel caps, the glucosamine. Get on, uh, start doing your chicken soup, your bone soup every day. Bone soup. Connective tissue building strategies. Jenny, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to motivate here. Good to talk to you. Have a great day. I hope we helped you out. Uh, Elaine, got about a minute. What's going on? Hi. Uh, can you hear me okay? I hear you great. What's up? Great. Yeah. Hey, just I have a comment and a question. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll, I'll make it quick. Um, basically, and uh, sounds like you're getting ready for commercial. Uh, yeah, go ahead, real quick. You got about thirty seconds. Come on. Okay. Uh, just uh, yeah, I have uh, lupus and I'm basically very sick. Oh. Ten years. Did you take care and, of it, or uh, you want some help? Well, yeah. It's, it's an interesting story. I started. Elaine, thinking. I got to get you to call back. We only have about five seconds, sweetheart. I'm so sorry. Okay. Okay, thanks. I, I want to hear what you have to say. Call back tomorrow. we got David Hoffel coming up after this, after this. Don't go away. Okay, we are back on the bright side. Thank you for joining us, friends. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific, 10 to 11 Central Time. This is your Common Sense Health and Nutrition Show where we cut to the chase about how to keep the body healthy and also how to keep the mind healthy. And i got to tell you, one of my favorite things to do aside from uh, aside from uh, studying about how the body works, is studying how the mind works. I love studying psychology, and that's why I got into sales in the first place and started reading self-help books about sales. I started reading guys like Tom Hopkins and Napoleon Hill and um, uh, uh, just general sales books, Anthony Robbins, way back in the 80s and 90s. It became fascinating with sales. I always considered sales to be, and business in general, uh, to be uh, kind of spiritual, actually, is especially if you have a good product and something you really want to you want to use to help change lives. So I started studying, studying sales, and I still do study sales. Uh, that's why I love network marketing, and that's why I'm very excited to have our next guest on, David Hoffelt, the author of a book called The Science of Selling, which bridges my two favorite subjects, or two of my favorite subjects, I should say, uh, which is science, the science of the body and biology and psychology and neurology and 
uh, sales as well. David calls sales a noble business, and I couldn't uh, a noble endeavor, and I couldn't uh, I couldn't agree more. Noble activity, he says. So anyway, welcome to the bright side, David Hoffeld. Hello there, David. Hey Ben, great to be here with you, and good to talk to you as well. So you are a the chief sales trainer and CEO of the Hoffeld Group, and your book is The Science of Selling. So are you more of a, a scientist or a sales guy, or 50-50? You know what? I was first a sales guy. Uh-oh. David, you're cutting out, David. I'm not sure who that is. Oh, that's too bad. Uh, Blake, are you there? What's that? I think we just... I don't, know if, I don't know if David was on a cell phone or not, uh, but I can tell you a little bit about his book while we get him back on the phone. Uh, he links these three aspects of human beingness, biology, neurology, and psychology to sales, and he talks about how you sell the way people buy. Now, when we make buying decisions, we make buying decisions based on, believe it or not, biological needs. Neurological and psychological aspects as well have an impact on how uh, how we make buying decisions and understand how we make buying decisions is going to have an impact on how we make selling uh, on how we sell as well. Part of a uh, classic example is using questions. There are questions that you can use that will actually trigger certain neurological aspects or psychological aspects or biological aspects in the consumer. And so asking the right questions is an extremely important aspect of the sales process. David, are you there? I am, Ben. I, I'm not sure what happened there, but I'm I, back. Okay, good. I was just I was just doing your thing for you there. I was just selling your book or talking about your your ideas. So anyway, are you more of a scientist or a uh, or a business person? You know, I got started in selling, and for years that's what I did. And then I kind of fell into the science by accident. So for the last oh about decade or so, I have been both. Uh, I've had my feet planted firmly in sales and business. That's where I always start with, but. Hey, once I found this science, I leverage it every day to help That's people awesome. be more successful. So I, I play in both worlds, and I love both of them equally. Okay, now, have you heard of this book, Biology? I have, yes. And so that's basically, you're saying the same kinds of things, that there's a biological aspect to how we make buying decisions, and there's a biological aspect that can be tapped into if you're, if you're selling, correct? Absolutely, yeah. There has been an explosion of scientific research in the last few decades focusing on how our brains make choices and the factors that influence what we say, how we act, and what we decide to buy. And we know what the science is, and now we know how to leverage it when we're selling. And that instantly makes us more effective, and it allows us to better serve our potential customers. Is there one fundamental uh, reason why we buy. I know there's a lot of little reasons, but is there one fundamental underlying reason that's biologically based to why we make a buying decision? There are many of them. There's not necessarily one. The closest one thing that, that the science has revealed is that a buying decision is made up of small incremental decisions. So that's how our brain makes a big decision. For us uh -huh. to say yes, to a product or service, we first must say yes, yes to certain foundational principles that allow us, that enable that larger decision to purchase. Is that the whole idea? Have you heard of Tom Hopkins by any chance? I have, yes. He had this whole idea of get people to say yes, just like, is your name this? Yes. And just, just ask questions and have them say yes. Is that kind of what you're talking about? Not at all. No, let me clarify. Uh, not at all. No, we know from science that there are certain commitments that people must make. The brain must make for you or I to ever say yes to anything. Big purchase, small purchase, doesn't matter. Science has quantified those commitments. So this isn't a gimmick. We're not just trying to trick people into saying yes by getting them to say it over and over again so they forget how to say no. No, we're basing this on actual science. So decades of research looking at how people make choices, we found that there are certain strategic commitments, six of them, that we know what they are, that if people commit to, they will buy, and if they don't, they will never buy. And so that's what every sales process should be focused on, is trying to align how we sell with how the brain makes a buying decision. So not gimmicky yeses, but actual yeses in these six, in these six commitment areas, if you will. Yes, yeah, this is rooted in decades of research. We can literally talk all day, and I have at conferences, uh, about this topic, because there's such depth to it. So yeah, this is not based on my opinions or anecdotal evidence. There are literally hundreds of studies that have delved into this, building one on another, and looking at the brain science, and, and we now know what these commitments are, and that allows us to become instantly more effective. Well, now you've got to tell us at least one or two of these commitments. 
All right, let me tell you the first one that's really foundational, and that is why change? So anytime I'm entering into a sales situation, that's one of the first commitments I want to get. Because until we get a commitment that someone needs to change, everything mm. else we do is irrelevant. Until they see the need for change to solve a problem, mm-hmm. presenting our product or service is, well, they look at it as irrelevant because it is in their eyes. It's a waste of time. It's actually a exactly. waste of both, both people's time. So do you want to convince or do you want to pre-qualify to people who are already on board? Yeah, the penguin in the sales environment, qualification matters. So, yeah, you don't want to waste your time trying to sell something to someone that cannot buy it. But once I know that I have a live potential customer, now what I want to do is try to guide them through the process. And so I want to address right away, why should they change? I have to break through what researchers refer to as a status quo bias. How do you do that? Real simply, you present insights. You want to challenge their thinking because oftentimes people don't know they need your product or service in spite of the Mm. fact that they might desperately need it. And Mm. that's our job is to break through that status quo bias and introduce insights that compel them to see the need to make a change. So we're in the world of nutrition here on this program, as I was telling you before we went to the, went on the air. And a lot of folks who listen to this program are, are using a nutritional product from a company called Longevity, a company that I represent. And a lot of them are in the business of helping people understand exactly what you're saying, why they need to be on a nutritional supplement program. So in your opinion, would it be... Is it worth talking to people who are not even don't know anything about nutritional supplementation about uh, why uh, why they should supplement in the first place, or is it better to pick people who are already on board with the idea of supplementation and then and then guide them or, or, or direct them into the specific products that we have? Yeah, that's an interesting question. I would say most I would say the second group that you mentioned would be far more uh-huh. likely to purchase, but most of us. In the, you know, most of us don't have the luxury of only presenting to those people, so we have to uh-huh. engage both of them. Okay, so the first thing is you've got to tell people why they need to change. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, we've got to take a break, okay? If you could get into the second or the third thing when we come back from our break, that would be great, David. Uh, the Science of Selling is his book, David Hoffel, CEO and Chief Sales Trainer of the Hoffel Group. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben talking to David Hoffeld, CEO and Chief Sales Trainer of the Hoffeld Group. I told you before I, uh, before uh, our first segment that I was going to tell you, uh, read to you these phone numbers for Melissa's lecture. So let me do that real quickly, and then we'll get back to David. Uh, dial 408-638-0968, and the meeting ID 5790449276. Okay, uh, David, uh, Dave, uh, welcome back, David. You were talking about why change. This is part of your six whys, by the way. These are, uh, these are the six specific questions that uh, represent all the steps that a, a potential cu- a customer is going to go through when he's deciding whether or not to buy. The first thing is why change. So we've got to tell the customer why, why he wants to change, correct? Absolutely. We want to gain commitment to it as well. We want a verbal commitment that they want to move forward Uh because commitments shape future behavior. When I commit to something, I now act differently in the future. Uh Uh-huh. So we want them committed. Yes. I love it. I love it. Okay, good. So second one, uh, the second why. Yeah, the next why is why now? Why should someone do this now? Why can't they wait to do it next week, next month, next year? Whenever. Why should we do it now? So we have to answer that. And one of the biggest stumbling blocks here, Ben, that um, I'm sure many of our listeners have experienced, I know I have before I learned about it, is when we try to create urgency, we enable what researchers call reactance. And this is a big deal. This kills persuasive messages. Reactance is the feelings of psychological arousal that occur when a person believes that their ability to freely choose is being restricted. It's when you feel pressured, like a person is pressuring you to do something. And when that happens, people Mm. don't do it. They instinctively push back and they reject our message. Why do you call it reactance and not resistance? That's what the researchers termed it as. They named it reactance because it's it's something innate within all of us. It's actually... um, Something that we all feel whenever we're told to do something. I'll give you my favorite example of it that we can all relate to is when we walk past the sign that says, don't touch wet paint, (laughs) Ben, what do you want to do? I absolutely touch it or I want to. 
Exactly. Everyone I ask that question to, salespeople <laughs> to CEOs, all say the same thing. You mean oh, I'm, I'm not you. just a I'm not just a contrarian freakazoid? I'm just a normal. Well, you person. might be, but in this case, we're all in there with you too, my friend, because <laughs> okay. yeah, we all we all want to do that. Why is that? Reactance. It's something we innately feel. So this is a big killer of sales. Oftentimes, we're presenting our products and. And we want to help people, but we try to get them to do it now, which is important, but we enable reactants. So what can we do? The good news is there is research on this, letting people know that it's their choice. Because good choice or not, people want to feel like they're the ones making mm. it, not being pressured. So mm. use phrases like, of course it's up to you at the end of your request. You'll be astounded. One research study found this increased compliance with the request by 400 percent and mm. I have seen that in many different sales environments uh, when people make a request let people know of course it's up to you and people are far more likely to choose in your favor using mm. that statement than not of course I want you to buy now or I want you to sign here or I want you to join but it's up to you exactly that makes them huh. feel that you're not pressuring them but your request that creates the urgency is still lingering it's but still now there not feel that like you're doing it so you haven't lost any of the any of the power of your request, of your of asking for the deal, so to speak. Exactly. You're not letting anyone off the hook. Huh. If you structured your request well, that still lingers. That's often people get tripped up. They think, I'm letting them off the hook. No. What you're doing is you're reducing reactants. And if you don't, instead of seeing the request, they'll see that's, you pressuring them and they'll push back. That's like, that's very clever. That's, that's a nice strategy for working with your kids, maybe. It works. You know what? A lot of these things uh, yeah. that I have in the book, surprisingly, is exactly how I used to get my kids to clean their room. <laughs> it's good parenting skills. It so, is. It is. Well, that's interesting. You know, that's an interesting aspect because uh, did you ever hear this guy? I think his name is Eric Byrne. He wrote a book called Games People Play about how there's the adult-adult relationship, adult-child relationship, and then parent-child relationships. There's different combinations of parent-child-adult. Have you heard of this? Games I, I've, I've heard of the idea. I have not read the book. It came from pop psychology in the 1960s. So what you're talking about is using the sales, sales customer relationship in a parent-child kind of way. Hmm. Yeah. I, in in some ways, I mean, we're leveraging science to kind of guide people to influence them in a parental kind, kind of way, way. not in a necessarily yeah. manipulative way, but in a helping helpful no. way. The way a parent helps helps guide things to absolutely, it. yeah, very interesting. Absolutely. Okay. Now, so why number why number one is why now? Why number two, or why change? Number two is why now, and then number three, uh, what's the third one? The third why? Yeah, why your industry solution? Why should? Why can't someone do this on their own? Why can't they mm. avert your entire industry and just figure it out on their own? You know, eat more mm. healthier foods. Why do they need supplements? Right. Mm. So, wh why is that? I need to answer that because if not, that's a competitor competitor we often don't look at. Those mm. outside of our industry, we have to address it. Otherwise, it'll cost us the sale. You know what's interesting is sometimes people jump right into wine number three before they go into wine number one and wine number two. Are, are, you, are these kind of sequential? Not always. A lot of times there's some overlap. The first one is always the first one. Why change? If you don't get that, everything else is kind of irrelevant. Um, but then a lot of them happen overlap, like the next one, why you and your company. Oftentimes that'll happen with number three. It depends on the sales environment and the customer. You kind of customize this for them, but you want to get commitments to all of them. Sometimes with overlap, sometimes they're unique and individual. Okay, so why your industry, in our case, why you'd want to supplement, why you and your company, that's your why number four. That would be why you want to, why you want to do business with longevity, why you want to participate in longevity. Then what, why number five? Why number five is why your product or service. Okay, I like you, I like your company, but why do I want your product? Why, why would I want this? Why am I going to spend my money on that? You have to answer that. And there's some really neat ways from science to do that. Okay, so uh, last one is kind of interesting uh, because that seems to me to be the last major sticking point and maybe yeah. the most important where the bottleneck would occur. Well, yeah. Tell us about why number six. Absolutely. You're spot on. That is the, usually the last one, and it often is a big sticking point that we often overlook. Why spend the money? This is what I found in the research. People would often make all the other commitments, but they, they weren't willing to move forward. And what this looks like is they're looking at buying your supplements or uh, buying a new couch. They can only mm. do one. We only have so much money. So now you're competing with a couch. So how do you do that? Well, the good news is we know exactly how to do it. And you need to address this because oftentimes you'll lose sales out 
not to something similar to you, but to something totally different that they have to choose between. Okay, so now you got you, your job as, as somebody who's trying to make a sale. Then is to t- is to somehow show them why they want the supplements and not the couch. Now you're saying there's some science behind that. Exactly. What I recommend doing and what the research shows is you want to leverage what's called fear of loss, loss aversion. This is extremely powerful. Research shows that it's even more powerful than talking about what you're going to get at a two-to-one ratio. So we're often really good at that when we present our products. You're going to be more healthy when you take these supplements. That's great. That's a gain. What are they going to lose if they don't? Mm. Focusing people on that and asking them questions. You know, if you didn't move forward with this, what Mm. do you think some detriment might be? Well, so then let them tell you. Let them, don't tell them. Ask them questions. Let them think about it and then verbalize with you. That's going to nudge them in your direction and away from that couch. Now, hang on, though. So uh, let me understand this. Fear of loss is more powerful than, than, than anticipation of gain? Desire for gain, yeah. And the research shows that about a two-to-one ratio. It's much more powerful. And if you can get the, the customer to articulate what that fear of loss is, it's more powerful. Yes. Instead of telling them, you want to ask them questions because I want them to think through this. And that's what these commitments do. They guide people in thinking through and then verbally responding to your ideas. Okay. Now, a lot of this, and we're not going to get a chance to talk about it because we only have about a minute. So for the listeners who find this intriguing, which I do myself, the science of selling, David Hoffelt, uh, the science of selling, probably get it anywhere. Uh, we're not going to get a chance to talk about the emotions that are involved with all this. But I think that is probably, to me, that seems like it would be the most important aspect. Everything we've talked about so far is rational and, and kind of mental, but the emotional aspect seems like it would be much more powerful. And in your book, you've come up with uh, several ways that you can leverage a buyer's emotional states, correct? Absolutely. This, and that took me years uh, to figure out. A lot of research on how powerful emotions are, and the research also now tells us exactly how we can engage people in ethical ways, because if you don't engage their emotions, you'll lose sales because of it. So uh, first thing that we a- I asked you about, like one thing that sums up all, all of these ideas, and I was thinking on this program, we talk about the notion of survival versus thrival, how our bodies are designed to survive and then thrive. Would you say a lot of this has to do with the drive, with the desire to survive or the drive to survive? Absolutely, yeah. It's, in, it's innate within us. A lot of these principles are hardwired in our brains, and when you leverage them, you're instantly more effective and communicate your, communicate your ideas more productively. Thank you so much, David Hoffel. What's your website, by the way? Hoffeldgroup.com. Hoffeldgroup.com. Okay, there you go. H-O-F-F-E-L-D uh, group.com. Hoffeldgroup.com. The book is The Science of Selling. David Hoffeld. Thanks, David. We'll talk again soon, buddy. I'm Farmer. This is Ben. Thanks for listening to The Bright Side. Have an awesome, wonderful, beautiful, spectacular day. We will talk to you all later. Bye for now.